So for today's video, me, your boy, Demus. I didn't even introduce myself. Let me do that again. Hi guys, it's your boy Demus. More than just a pen. Today's video, we are gonna be working on a dose and a dance on how to cross hatch. Now this is a topic that I feel like if you watch this video, like this video right here, you don't need to watch any other ballpoint pen video just to learn the fundamentals. I feel like this video, if I, if I touch all the points that I can think of, you know, which I will have to put eventually in the book, which I've been speaking about for a while. Um, I, I feel like I'm overthinking that, the book. You know, I need to just make it simple, straight to the point, everything I've learned, and just put it together, boom. You know, it might not be the best thing, but I feel like I just need to stop overthinking things and get shit done. You know what I'm saying? Get you done. Anyways, today's video, do's and don'ts. Things not to do, things to do, when it comes to cross hatching. So let's not waste any more time, you know, if you're new to the channel, hit the subscribe button, hit the notification bell, so every time D moves up, who that? That's me, uploads a video, you get a notification, letting you know that I uploaded, which is quite often right now. But yeah, let's, let's, let's just get into this. Roll it! So to do this, the first thing you need, obviously, is a piece of paper. I always try and go for something that's like around 180 plus when it comes to weight, nothing, not AE like standard printing paper. You don't want that, none of that. Cause obviously your paper will just start creasing. So that's the first don't when it comes to ballpoint pen in general. Don't use no printing paper. Again, if you are a beginner, then I recommend printing paper. It's pretty good for a beginner cause that might be all you have. And also it makes you understand the whole point of control. Knowing that, okay, if I go to start zigzagging and sh doing dumbness like that, my paper will crease so it automatically that's like a good thing because it makes you okay I know I've got to build this with layers in order for my paper not to crease which is something that I had to go through hence why I'm so good at pressure so yeah print your paper again it's a bad thing but at the same time it's a good thing if you're a beginner because then you get to understand what I just said if you don't get it then ask me in the comment section I'll try to repeat that but anyways we're going to start with the don'ts and the first thing I can think of when it comes to cross hatching that you don't want to do is zigzagging now when i say zigzagging i mean like what is this why did this come out blue yo why is you why is my camera not focusing as well hey this we, we just started all wrong i've got a black pen here that's blue which is smart cool okay musa you best change up where you locate your pens okay well, let's let's try this pen here i'm hoping this is black see this is why you always gotta get a scrap piece of paper to test out the pen first, Musa. You've been doing this for about 18 plus years. Dude, I think you would understand to test it out first, but clearly not. Okay, we're gonna turn this paper over. Oh yeah, there we go, there we go. Hey, camera, you need to focus though. Let's come correct. Okay, let's start this. First thing, zigzag. When I mean zigzag, I mean going like this without lifting up your hand and then going in a different direction as well and not lifting up your hand. I'm gonna mix this, I'm gonna be doing don'ts and do's at the same time. I'll do the don'ts first, quickly explain it, and go do the do's back and forth. You know, normally I like to just do this don'ts and then go straight to the do's, but today back and forth. Okay, so the reason why I say this is very bad is because when it comes to doing like a realistic image, you know, um, there's very inconsistent lines, there's gonna be like the ends where you're connecting are gonna be way darker than what's in the middle and it just looks scruffy. Like it just looks, doesn't look clean at all. Um, overall, it's just bad. You don't wanna do this. You know, when you're doing a sketch just for yourself, just playing around, okay, you can do this if you want to. But when we're, what, these tutorials that I'm doing here is straight to realisticness. So realistic drawings, this does not work. It's a no go. We want this not to happen whatsoever. Now, what you want to do is, again, like I said, you want to do like this. Lift up your pen every time you do a line, you know, lift up your pen every time you do a line and then same for the different direction. Again, this is, this is the difference though. This is the big difference. You see how dark this is, you know, some people are like, okay, I want this. I want it to look like this. Though. I want to get dark quick. In bullpen pen, there's no such thing as quick. Now, some of you are probably gonna leave the video there when you say, what, there's nothing as quick? I ain't got time for that, I'm out. Please, just just chill and stay, 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 stay. Um, the beauty about a bullpen pen is, of course, your drawing is built up with lines, and it's all about having patience as well. You gotta build up them layers. 
you know you gotta do the different angles you know got to keep changing angles keep changing angles you know understanding that you gotta build this up this is something that you do until there's no like white gaps in between the lines now the next mistake I see when it comes to cross hatching is something to do with this like I just said the closer the lines the better doing like things like this okay it should have been zigzag but like this and then saying oh my god why is it not black why it should be solid black again it's pretty obvious why it's not solid black look at the gaps between the lines again this is not wrong let me just tell you that now this is not wrong this is good for comic book art you know doing comics and stuff like that and this this is good for that but when it comes to realistic drawing now no <laughs> this doesn't work you know so when it comes to realistic drawing the key is of course pressure how much pressure you apply but also trying to get the lines as close as you can to one another now as you guys see i'm going at a pretty fast pace that's because i am yeah let's just say i'm a ballpoint pen expert now you can you can kind of call me that i wouldn't say i still i'm still learning things but i'm up there with what i know you know um so that's why i have this speed which is going to move on to my next point you see how close the lines are it just looks smooth it just looks way better than this you know smooth okay lid lid okay lid you just want to go away yeah, you do your... there the next thing i'm going to talk about is speed you know this is something you do not want to do when it comes to purple pen drawing. You don't want to go like this. Now you watching you're probably thinking, boring. Can you can you can you get it moving, please? Cause like I ain't got time to be sitting there for hours watching you do line by line by line so slow like that, bruh. Come on, man give me something reason why i say you don't want to do this one is because if you can see now let me try and zoom in real quick i don't know if you guys can see but the lines are fairly inconsistent they're not consistent enough you know there some are actually darker than others i don't know if the camera's picking it up but some are actually darker than others and we want it to be you know you want to we want consistency we want it to look like this you know we want some kind of consistency here you know like this so the thing you want to do is like i said i kept on saying the word there i don't know if you guys picked up what consistency you want your lines to have a rhythm you know you want to have a like a a rhythm in order to keep the consistent stroke because when you go too slow like over here you start going slow you know your lines are not gonna be as consistent now they're slow and then there's slow you know, if you're going like this, you know, that's not that bad. It's not that bad. If you're going like this, it's fairly slow. Now, this is something else now. Just doing that, I just thought about something. And I'm trying to think, right now I'm doing this off the top of my head, trying to think of all the things. You're probably thinking, you should have wrote it down. All the bad things. Like that. No. Another thing you don't want to do <laughs> when it comes to ballpoint cross action yeah is trying to do long consistent strokes oh my god i can't it, <laughs> this is like the thing not to do trying to do a long trying to cover up a, a lot of area in one go now uh, any bullpen pen artist there out here watching this video even if they're pro and i will tell you that this this is a no-go don't ever try and do this you know you always want to work in sections you want to take something like, you know, if it's like a big, let's just draw a quick box, you know, you want to work on the top part, you know, work on the top part, fill that up, you know, boom, and I come down to another level. Again, the reason why you have a bit of speed is because you want to keep try and keep that consistency, you know, because if I don't try and remember the speed I had at the top, yeah, it's it's just good. it's not gonna be good. So here as well. Now this is why this is where the scrap paper comes in, because you need to come off the scrap paper, give your pen a little whirl, make sure that it's actually flowing, and then you come back to your paper. 
see now the ink is coming out again when you're doing this very lightly sometimes the ink doesn't flow but the key is when it comes to cross hatching the first couple of layers it's all about just making sure that it's light just light and then you build it up nice and slowly yeah nice and slowly not trying to cover up all the area try to cover up little by little you know sections you don't want to do none of this long this is just long this trying to cover up a whole big area in one go you're just setting yourself up for failure you don't want to do that at all now this moves me on to my next point that I wanted to make with when I was doing the box thing here when I was doing this box thing I was thinking about What was I just thinking about? I just thought of something when I was doing this box thing. Um, wow. Okay. This just went blank. Wake up, bruh. I just went blank. I just went blank real quick. Oh, this is why people say you should write down your points. But let me zoom back out. Now, I was thinking of... Cross yeah, that's what I was thinking of. Cross hatching. I was just doing it this way. And... For a very long time, that was very uncomfortable for me. So if you are a beginner, again, what you don't want to do is start your first couple of layers going in the direction that you're not comfortable with. You know, I'm right-handed. So going in like from left to right, it just doesn't work because, you know, the consistency is all over the place. You can see the lines are all over the place. Whereas if I was to go from right to left, It's easier for me to keep that. Of course, it takes longer, you know, because obviously you, you're not pressing that hard. You know, but the trick is here, if you want to obviously cross hatch, because obviously I'm doing it in the direction I'm not comfortable with, you know, and then I'll come over with the direction I am comfortable with. You know, as you can see, the strokes are totally different. The direction I'm, I'm going in is way better than the direction. It's just a lot of inconsistency lines and it's going to be very difficult. Now, what you want to do is go like this. So go in the direction that you're comfortable with. Yeah, like this. You know, you're comfortable going this way. So why not just rotate the paper? And then rotate it again. And then rotate it again. Boom, and there you go. Let me rotate all the way around. See now, this is the con this is the con like this is this is beautiful because it's just beautiful, beautiful layering, beautiful pressure, and all the pr pressure is consistent throughout. The only reason why it looks darker than all these other ones is because I have overlapped the you know the more layers you add, you know the, the darker it will get. And this is something I did in the beginning. I always used to rotate the paper because this is this was comfortable for me. This felt so so weird. I was just like, what am I doing? I shouldn't be doing this. But obviously, when I started recording myself, knowing that the paper has to stay in one position, because if I kept on rotating it for someone watching it, it's just like ugh, it's a bit. You know, man will start looking confused, be like, why am I, why is my neck hurting? Why is my neck going like this, that? So I had to obviously learn and develop the discipline to learn to be comfortable going in the opposite direction. And that's obviously, I'm, I'm really good at it now. You know, obviously when I don't record off camera, then I rotate my paper. Or if I'm doing a drawing and I feel like, you know what, I'm more comfortable shading this area in I do it off camera, like when I'm off camera and I feel like there's still a couple more layers I need to apply, then obviously I will sit in my living room, whatever, if I'm watching something or some, doing something else, I'll just sit there and shade it in even more and rotate my paper. But if you're a beginner, I would advise you to do this, of course, boom, boom, boom. If you're planning to record yourself in the future, then try practice learning to go in a negative way, 
that you don't really comfortable with develop that skill um but yeah i feel like that's pretty much it there's not really much i can think of else when it comes to cross hatching pressure you know no zigzag i think we covered that the spacing of lines you want to keep them as close as you can together um going too slow is a problem you don't want to go too slow you want to have some kind of speed to your drawing trying to cover up too much area at once that's a no-go you want to do it sections um going in the opposite direction you're not comfortable with you want to go in the direction you're comfortable with and that's pretty much it you know i already told you guys about the whole overlapping of layers you know if you want to get to solid black you're gonna to have to obviously build it up which i kind of basically said um that's pretty much it for cross hatching you know if you want to start creating more darker tones it's obvious you just need to add more dark layers you know if you're going like this you know, really trying to really trying to cover up that area You know, this is something else that's really bad like this and then coming over here you know trying to trying to make a light area you know once you've zigzagged and everything trying to fade it into a light area is going to be very difficult because obviously you've got all these zigzags here loose ends which is not cool whereas of course if you build it up quite a few layers keep adding to it make sure you try and keep it as consistent as you can you know there's also such thing as called going too fast but you don't want to go too fast bam and then you start adding more layers in the areas you feel like need more shading you know like this you need to change direction here again I've been doing this for a while so that's why I can pretty much add apply a bit of speed to it again try and keep the lines as close as you can together now this is something I do extra let me just give it to you this is what I do extra um, sometimes when I see like this little gaps in between the lines I do circular shapes you know just to fill it up apply circular shapes you know don't know if you guys notice any difference with me doing circular shapes in the dark areas try and make it pitch black it really does apply and work and fill in the gaps and this makes it so much easier just to try and you know add a few layers here in order to blend it out into the other one But you see, of course you can still keep adding layers, layers, layers until you feel like it is blended in. Bam, 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 bam. Okay, another thing I want to do, which is not going to be a cross hatching, but I thought I'd just give you guys like a bonus tip. You know, so let me give you a bonus tip. When it comes to creating light tones, your hand position. When you come up here, this is when you go into like real details, you know, like boom touchy you've got to have master control but the more your hand goes up the looser your strokes will be you know almost like it this is this is what most pro ballpoint pen artists do they hold it very loosely at the top so that way they have less of a control and less likely to apply crazy amounts of pressure you know that they don't need because if they go close and they're trying to do light pressure it's 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 very difficult very difficult and like right now i'm trying to go as light as i can compared to this look at that 
you can hardly see that and that's the lightest I can go. So again, bonus tip here. That's for y'all that I watched the video to the end. Uh, hold your pen higher up for looser pressure and looser tone you will get. Um, the closer you go, the easier it is to, obviously it's still, it's still great control. You know, this is not bad control, it's just more loose and you'll get a lighter tone when you're trying to get them really light areas. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. You know, the do's and don'ts. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, make sure to do the thing, smash the thumbs up, and I will catch you guys in the next do's and don'ts. Comment your suggestions below. So there you have it for my do's and don'ts on how to crosshatch. I feel like I touched on every single topic there. Let me know in the comment section if you feel like anything I missed. Um, I will be doing more subjects, things to things to draw with the technique and everything. Um, try and make a couple of do's and don'ts on that. So if you guys do have them suggestions, you know, when I do find the time, I will make them tutorials happen for you guys. And yeah, if you want to see full length, real time tutorials, you know where to go. My Patreon, got a ton on there available for you guys with voiceover. You know, no time lapse, no nothing straight live type of situation. Um, again, if you want to see me live as well, go on a Twitch and you can check me out live whenever I am live. Obviously, right now, my situation, I'm not live that much. But, yeah, that's it. I'll catch you later in the next video. Peace.